401k rules for the single member LLC. Hey everyone, Adam Bergman here, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. And this is the second episode in a five episode podcast series on solo 401k rules for various entity types or pretty much all the most popular entity types. So in today's podcast will focus on probably the most popular entity form for the small business owner, the single member LLC or the LLC that's owned by one person. Now, the difference between a sole proprietor and a single member LLC is that there is an LLC, there's an entity that is created that is respected from a legal state enterprise perspective that officially provides limited liability protection to the sole owner. That's why a sole proprietor would move from a sole proprietorship to a single member LLC because the LLC provides the owner with number one, limited liability protection, which means all the assets the owner has outside of the LLC will be protected from credit or attack. And number two, the LLC's flow through entity. It's basically a tax nothing. It's invisible. It's a disregarded entity. It doesn't exist from a tax standpoint, meaning all the income just funnels up to the owner. So from a tax standpoint, the sole proprietor and the single member LLC is in the same spot. They actually both file a Schedule C. The distinction is that the LLC provides the owner from a corporate standpoint, the advantage of limited liability protection. From a tax standpoint, it's pretty much the same, right? Because the LLC is a disregarded entity for tax purposes. But a sole proprietor does not have limited liability protection by establishing an LLC. On the other hand, the business owner will have limited liability protection. The good news is the rules for solo form Ks for sole proprietors and single member LCs are pretty much the same. So I'm just going to recap what I spoke about last week on the solo form 401k rules for um, the sole proprietor. So who's eligible for a solo K, right? The first thing we all got to figure out. Well, number one, you got to have a business. Doesn't have to be a Google or Apple. Just needs to have some anticipation of profit, whether it's consultant, whether it's selling, you know, shoes on eBay or t-shirts um, on the real real or uh, Etsy, whatever it is. Um, you just need to have some business income. You got to sell a widget, sell a service. You can even be developing software and technically not have any revenue, but you need to obviously have the anticipation of income, right? That's the idea why someone would start a business is the anticipation to make money. And then two, there cannot be any owners other well, there cannot be any full-time employees other than the owners and their spouses. So for a single member LLC, there's one owner. So that one owner and their spouse can operate a business and have a sole K okay because a spouse is not deemed an employee for ERISA purposes. And technically, the LLC can also have employees so long as they work under 1,000 hours during the year or three consecutive years of 500 hours or more. Now, obviously, 1099s or consultants are not deemed employees, just need to make sure they really satisfy the non-control factor and they really are an independent contractor like a painter versus someone who may show up to your office every day and you have some control over that person, meaning they have a company computer, they show up nine to five, that hand, they probably are an employee, even though you may classify them as a contract. So you just need to be careful about your characterization of that particular worker. But all in all, the rules are as follows. Solo K, you need a business and you ha cannot have any full-time employees. It means a thousand hours or three consecutive years of 500 hours or more other than the owners of their spouses or owner and spouse in the case of a sole proprietor or single member LLC. Sole proprietor, single member LLC report income on a Schedule C. It's attached to the 1040. You Schedule C will include all the business income, all the expenses, and that net amount will be subject to Social Security slash FICA, approximately 15%. And then whatever's left will be your number, whatever's left, I should say, would be your number that will be subject to the solo 401k contribution rules. Now, the most popular reason why people set up a solo K is really the high contributions. It has a lot of other great features like the ability to borrow up to 50K, tax-free, penalty-free. Uh, it's a loan you pay back over five years to your plan um, at a interest rate as of April 2023, which is quite high. It's 8%. During COVID, it was 3.25%. But the good news is you're paying yourself back. 
money goes to your plan, not to a bank. And you can use a loan for any purpose, personal business or leisure, whatever you want. Um, you can also do traditional investments or alternatives if you have a self-directed plan, very good asset credit or protection, and some super, super duper um, Roth options where you can do a mega backdoor Roth with up to 66K or 73.5 if you're over $50 for dollar. And if you're a real estate investor, you can use leverage a non-recourse loan without triggering uh, the 37% maximum UBIT tax. So all in all, it's just a really, really robust, great investment vehicle and also an amazing retirement plan. But let's focus on contributions because those are the most important rules to understand vis-a-vis -vis the single member LLC. So there's two ways to break down the solo 401k contribution rule. The first is the employee deferral. Second is the employer profit sharing. Now, in both cases, they're both coming from the business because it's a single member LLC. But the employee deferral is under 2023, the maximum if you're under 50, 22,500 or 30,000 if you're over 50. That's dollar for dollar, right? So if you made 40K and you're over 50, you can do 30K and be left with you know, around 10 to pay taxes on. The money goes back into your plan. If it's pre-tax, it's tax deductible. If it's Roth, it's after tax. But obviously, so long as you're over 59 and a half, and the Roth's been open five years, it would all be tax free. So most plans will give you the pre-tax and Roth options. The employer contribution right now is uh, pre-tax. So the company would get a tax deduction in 2023 for the contributions. For a single member LLC, just like a sole proprietor, the maximum is 20% of the net schedule C. So if you made 100K, 20K. If you made 40K, it's 8K. So it's 20% of the net schedule C. Remember, net means Take all your business revenues, income, minus all your expenses, you get your net amount, pay off your social security, FICA taxes, whatever's left is that number that you can use to then take out the employee deferrals, which is the 22.5 or the 30K if you're over 50, and the 20% is on that same number. But you can't ever contribute more than you make. So if you only make 30K, you're not gonna be able to contribute 66,000 bucks. Now, the most I said you can put away, is 66K if you're under 50 or 73.5 if you're over 50. And that includes the employee deferral, the 22.5 and the 30K if you're over 50, plus the 20%. When you aggregate those and add them together, they can't go above 66K or 73.5 if you're over 50. When are contributions due? It's just like a sole proprietor, they, they're due when the 1040 is filed, which is April 15th or up to October 15th if you file an extension. So you don't have to do them by 1231. Why? The IRS understands that if you're a single member LLC, sole proprietor, you're not going to know your net number until probably March, April, right? You're not going to definitely not going to know by 1231 because you need someone to help you with the numbers and figure out what all your expenses, maybe you have depreciation, all other types of expenses and deductions that will minimize your income amount and get you to the actual real net schedule C. So there's no way anyone can know that number by 1231. Whereas if you keep watching or listening over the coming weeks, you get to partnerships or C or S corps, you'll know your W-2 by 1231. So that's why the employee deferrals for those types of entities are due by 1231. Now, if you have a tax, if you have a plan set up today, you know, in 23 or, or before 22, 18, 17, then you can do, as I mentioned, the employee deferrals, the employer contributions for 22 up until April 15th or October 15th with extension. Um, going forward in 2024, thanks to the Secure Act 2.0, which was passed December 2022, you can set up your plan on April 14th, 24, and still do employee deferrals and profit sharing for 23, which is super cool. Today in 23, if you wanted to set up a plan on April 14th for the 22 taxable year, you'd only be able to do the 20% employer contribution. That employee deferral would not be able to be done in 23 for the 22 taxable year because you did not set up your plan in 22 or before. But those rules are being changed because of the SECURE Act, but it's gonna kick in only for the 23 taxable year, which would mean starting in basically when you file your return 24. Um, otherwise, that's kind of it. Um, it really mirrors the sole proprietor. Employee deferrals, profit sharing, can't go above 66K or 73.5 if you're over 50 in the 20. 23 taxable year, employee deferrals generally are pre-tax or Roth, employer contributions are pre-tax, 
you have until you file your return. If you have a plan set up in 23 or before, then you're good to go. You can make these contributions all the way up until April uh, 15th or October 15th if you get an extension. If you have not set up a plan in 22, it's okay. You can still set one up in April 23 for the 22 year or even October, but you're only going to be able to do the 20%. You're not going to be able to do the employee deferrals. That will only kick in that new rule starting in 2024 for the 23 taxable year. That's it. It's not super complex. Again, if you're a client of our financial or you want to be, we will walk you through these rules. We have calculators. We'll really spend some time to understand how it all works and help you hopefully maximize your contribution options. Uh, this is the most powerful plan, the most robust retirement and investment plan. If you are self-employed, you're lucky to have a solo K. Trust me, I wish I could have one. Um, at IRA Financial, I max out. I'm under 50. I put in 22.5, but our company only does a 4% match. If I had a solo K, I'd probably be able to go up to 20 or 25%. 25% uh, 25 for an S or C Corp, 20% for a single member LLC. So I'm definitely leaving some money on the table. If you are self-employed, consider yourself lucky. Not only do you get to probably control your work schedule and have a better life than I do, but um, you get to put away more money in a retirement plan. So uh, it's a win-win. Um, this is, again, a five-part series. So next week, I'm going to tackle C-Corps, then S-Corps, and then finish off with partnerships. So uh, please, please keep listening, keep watching. If you just want to educate yourself or maybe you have a C or S-Corp, um, I'll be here next week. So um, I think this is important. I'm happy I kind of broke this down. Uh, I try to, at times in the past, of like put it all together and people get confused. So I just wanted to do specific podcasts slash videos for each entity type. So this way you can focus in on your business form and entity form and, and just have more, a, a better, more grounded, detailed explanation of how the solo forum k rules work specifically for your entity so thanks again for spending some time here today i really really appreciate it hope you guys enjoyed the podcast take care be well and i'll see everyone again next week ciao